So today we've woken up and one of the crew members has slept on his shoulder and dislocated it. So now we're just trying to get it back in. I won't pull hard. I won't pull hard. Just tell me, just nice and slow, controlled. Are you looking for actual hard fiberglass that's been already made? Oh, oh, you did it! I fucking love you. Oh, I love you. now it's gone again. Thank you. Oh my god, that was so, <laughs> so much pain. What happened, dudes? It, it's like an orgasm when it goes. What a start to the day! Hi, my name's Colin. I used to be a chief engineer on super yachts, but gave it all up to buy a hurricane damaged Lagoon 450. My friends and I are fixing it up as we go and are determined to circumnavigate the entire planet. So subscribe if you want some inspiration to live life to the fullest. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? That was actually quite an eye-opening experience because none of us knew how to pop the shoulder back in. Um, we got on the radio and we radioed for a doctor and no one really knew. So we kind of left to our own devices and luckily we got it back in but um, I guess these are the kind of medical emergencies that you have to be ready for at sea as well when there are no doctors around. So yeah, we're off to El Salvador today. We've uh, just finished glassing all the hull so it's a huge milestone for us so we're going to celebrate we're going to um, El Salvador and go surfing for five days. And, uh, we've had to wait this long because we've had the boat torn apart and balsa core like the wood inside the hull of the boat exposed so we've been waiting till we've got it all glassed in till we can leave so it's taken us just over four weeks and uh, we're finally here pretty excited how do you feel i feel good i feel better than ever today <laughs> why'd you, know, you shoulders back why'd here? you decide to pop your shoulder out in the morning we go surfing i just want to test myself mentally and <laughs> Start the day off with a bang. <laughs> a friend of mine said uh, surf there is unreal and it's a really safe little surf town that we're going to called El Tunco. And uh, just got to get there safely and uh, have a few days off. Can't wait. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, sir. El Salvador has a population of 6.5 million people and is the highest homicide rate in the world per capita. Last year, there were 3,340 killings, or about nine a day. So we did not really know what we were getting ourselves into, so we chose to follow strict instructions from friends who had been there recently. We soaked up the stunning views on the way there, and were dropped off in the middle of San Salvador City. So we made it to San Salvador, it took, a, it took about eight hours, not too bad. But um, met a nice taxi driver, he's going to take us to El Tunco for $25. We're pretty surprised, this town's really busy and quite well developed and everything. We didn't really know what to expect and do our research on the place that much, but yeah, looks really cool. But I want to get out of here and get out to the beach now. Well, we ended up getting in at about... 10 o'clock last night, 11 o'clock maybe. On Airbnb it said it was an entire house <laughs> with four bedrooms. And then when we get here it's actually, we only get one bedroom and there's like two beds here. So Sean had to sleep in the hammock last night. So we sort that situation out. It's five in the morning, 5.30 maybe. Go check out the surf. We haven't seen the beach or anything yet, but there's a three meter swell out there today, so it could be pretty good.
really, really like the Heron Altuco so far. It's super cheap. You can get a really good meal for like three, four dollars. And we've just been surfing out the front of here mainly at uh, La Bocana and there's one next to it called La Bocanita. Those are the spots we've been hitting, but the surf today is a little bit average. We've made a couple of friends here and we're all going to jump on one of these chicken buses and we're going to go south to a place called Punta Roca. And that's rated as one of the best waves in all of Central America, so we're really excited about that. Punta Roca was awesome. The wind got on it in the end and it got real onshore, but um, it's an epic wave. It's a really long right hand point break. Um, not too shallow or anything. It's super safe, super fun. And then today, Jamie, this fat ass must have landed on it and uh, he's creased the board. So he's going to send it into the shop now to get it fixed. <laughs> So we met a new friend yesterday, his name's Rama. Over here. He's taking us down to the uh, local skate park. We're gonna try not to hurt ourselves. So we finally made it back to Rio Dulce. Yeah, El Salvador, what, a, what an awesome place. I think a lot of it is just gang related and it's, you know, if you stay out of those circles and you stick to the major tourist spots, I think you're fairly safe going to places like that. I don't know, maybe you guys have some thoughts you'd like to comment on, but we felt, we felt really safe. Marty, we play. Hey. Good boy! He's a good boy! Good boy! Good boy! We're back, buddy. We're back. Oh. Hey, how are you? How are you? We had arrived back to Rio Dulce on a Saturday and thought it would be rude to go back to work on a Sunday. So we took the day to explore the Rio Dulce area on motorbikes. Yeah, this guy rents bikes for $20 a day. Uh, we've got all six of his bikes. I think there's mm, 10 of us. And we're gonna go explore for the day. Is it the truth that you'll be living tonight? 
That was one of the coolest roads I've ever ridden on. You could just see this view of the lake and all the all the farms on the side. Really fresh pavement. Like it's so good. Can we get out of the Wait a Put your helmet on backwards. <laughs> been riding for about an hour. Jamie's already got a flat tire, so everyone's got to stop for Jamie. Hola, ¿cómo se llama? María. Mucho gusto. So this place doesn't have any new tubes, it's got a huge hole in the in the tube. He thought he could patch it but the hole's too big so we're gonna have to go to the next town and try and buy a tube which is 20 kilometers away. It's warm and it's dirty. And I think there's bits of shit floating here. All feelings are just like we got through everything else. But I see you. Honey, this is in no way funny. We will find our way back. Just ridden a couple hundred kilometers and everyone's kind of getting hungry so we stopped in this town it's full guatemalan town like dirt road and probably haven't seen too many tourists coming here but we found one spot that looks like they're going to serve some lunch and the options are soup or chicken so have a quick bite and carry on We're at this place called Agua Caliente, which is like a hot spring sort of thing where there's a, a waterfall that's got hot water running down it, and then it comes down here. So, we're gonna go check it out. behind me is super hot it's almost too hot to get under I see oh, I see that 40 degrees try to get under After such an epic day, it was time for us to reluctantly go home. It was so cool to finally see some of the Guatemalan countryside 
and we had a new appreciation for the beauty in the area surrounding us. The locals we met on the side of the road, the kids playing outside the shops, these people seemed so far removed from the trouble and crime present in parts of this country. In our travels, it always seems that these people who appear to have very little always have the biggest smiles. But then again, at the end of that day, our smiles were pretty big too. Hey, hey how you guys been? Yeah.